here's a picture of us. These are all uh, speakers of this conference, past speakers. This is something about us, there's something augmented, something invisible that could be there, but we don't see it. Any guesses, any ideas? Yeah. Yes, it's the gestures. I would say it's our ideas. Because most of the time when we explain things, when we share things, when we share stories, we actually use our body. We do it very physically, very tangibly. We use our hands, you know, this is like one option, two option, right? It's in our language we say understanding, fashti and get a grip, etc. It's very physical, we think very physically. Um, therefore, I think it would make a lot of sense if we would see this, except the challenge is that if I do this, you actually don't see what I see in my mind, right? But I see it. And this is the thing that I would like to change. So this is my contention that a really strong future of AR is actually storytelling. Yes, there are many futures, I know, like really advanced and high school thing, but we all do share ideas and we all do this. And I think if you, if you could see each other ideas this way, it would be really powerful. Um, this is Prezi I'm using, by the way. That was mentioned. <laughs> so I'm Adam, I'm co-founder of Prezi and I'm media artist and architect was my background. And I always have been really passionate about augmenting reality. The thing is though that I started on the hard end, <laughs> like in my artwork it was mostly gluing tens of thousands bits of electronics on buildings and spaces to make them augmented and respond to people. When you guys say AR is hard, <laughs> this is also very hard. Um, but it was fun and I think the, the most important thing I learned there that First it just started like you know, exploring, but then I understood that when we create experiences where people can themselves change the spaces, where people can themselves express themselves in the spaces, back then architecture, it's such a beautiful, powerful vision for the future. So after we did this with my co-founders about eight years ago, we started Prezi, and then the main motivation was to, to move away from the very, very elite audience of the art world to try to do a product where we can reach people like kids um, like these small kids using Prezi here, or rock stars, Bono, <laughs> and there's many others, of course. And, and then the main, main idea with Prezi was that, to me, this is still a very special journey, right? You know, we are traveling along this space here. It is 2.5D, it's not full 3D, but the benefit of that is that it's so simple to author that kids and rock stars can use it, <laughs> right? Not like a full 3D environment. So this is what got us to all these nice numbers, like three billion views, 85 million users. Uh, we are 250 people, 270 people company. And really what we see here, I think, is that this kind of spatial visual storytelling is getting more and more mainstream. People like it, people want to do more of it. This didn't stop us from trying to dream about the next steps of how we can use spaces to express ourselves. Um, about two years ago, we did a little lab it didn't become a huge hit, like I don't know, 600,000 downloads. Um, we call it Nutshell. It's basically a small augmented reality storytelling gap. Like here I found this beautiful landscape on the moon, which is just rotten sandbags <laughs> in the backyard. Or I can explain how my background in media art comes really handy nowadays as a father that I can fix all the electronic toys at home, right? So these are tiny, this is not live, this is not interactive, this is like you, you do a few pictures and we take five, six seconds to analyze the uh, camera image and we reconstruct the space from that. But it works, you can use it, you can download it, it's quite, quite nice and poetic. Today what we do, we're actually uh, working on Prezi AR. This is something that we have um, first shown at TED Global in Vancouver two months ago, where this fantastic speaker, Robert Sapolsky, was using Prezi uh, to dial in remotely and do his presentation, augmenting his body gestures and his faces. I don't know if you ever noticed, but at TED Talk, they work really hard on their presentations, both what they say and what they show. But when you see them on TED.com, it's 80% of the time you see the faces of the speakers, right? And only 20% all these visuals that a lot of people work hard to do. Of course, the reason is, you all get it, like it's us, it's our bodies, it's our humans in the center that tells the story. And these visuals are merely there to augment us, to help us, you know, to explain it better or it, you know, to show it ideas with more complexity. So this is really the, the thing that excites me about this thing today is that 
because it's built on Prezi, it is very, very easy to use. Anybody can do these things, right? Kids. Six-year-olds kids do this nowadays, and they love it. Um, and then they can express themselves. And I think why this is important for me that it, it really contradicts this other vision that we see. I'm sure many of you have seen this video by um, Keiichi Masuda, the hyper-reality. It's the most precise, frightening video <laughs> of the near future we can imagine. And you can also notice that what happens here that the, the hero of this journey is subjected to AR. She doesn't create anything. She's just being forced to witness how AR is covering up these sad environments, these neglected cities. Or likewise, I also don't like this vision very much. This is what the Terminator movie, Terminator saw of the world around it, right? Analyzing, you know, a lot of AR vision nowadays, it's about this, like, analyze the environment, tell me more about these things. It's actually spying. <laughs> Just think about this future. How suspicious will you be of somebody else wearing glasses and looking at you? <laughs> Are you downloading my secret data that I don't have access to, right? You know, I don't think this is the world we want to live in. And yeah, I mean, it sounds nice that you will use this technology to find a banana in the grocery store, but <laughs> I don't buy that. Um, so the other, the future I really believe in, in regards of it, to AR, is that we actually put us, humans, in the center uh, this is all Prezi AR uses by various people. And then AR is augmenting us. We see each other, we stay there, you know, we are the carriers of the story. We are the ones who connect to each other, right? And the augmented thing helps us to see each other's thoughts. It helps us to understand each other better, that we can, you know, connect more in a more substantial way, not to cover the neglected cities, but to, to see each other's minds. And the most important thing here is that all these people created these experiences themselves. So they are in control of what the AR shows about them, and not you and your glasses. Apologize. <laughs> but I am the one who tells the world around me that this is my AR self, this is how I want to express myself, right? So this is the kind of future I hope for AR to be happening. We are working very hard on it. Um, if you think it's fun and interesting, let's chat outside in the corridor later. Thank you. Yeah.